to maybe do a webinar on frames and tables and help you understand some of the things that need to be done to take care of your tables, making sure they're set up correct. Yeah, all things that will help make your sewing better yes. work with your quilting yep. so that you're more successful. And that's what it's all about is having a successful quilting experience. Because we love it. <laughs> that's right. There is fun in this. There but is. It's fun if it's successful. How that's about that? Right. There we go. So we are just want to remind you that today our webinars and they always are recorded so that you can go back and you know find some information that you may have missed today. And we have the PowerPoint and the video recorded. And so we do have a video for you today with this. Uh, I'm helping Marie, and we have with our video Cheryl and Carrie, our studio educators, that we will be working with you today and just teaching you some things to help you have a better quilting experience. Again, reminding you that it is recorded, so it's always recorded and it will be up online at least by tomorrow morning. Probably yeah. Jared is so good. But, and gets it earlier, but we <laughs> promise it'll be at least tomorrow morning. It will be there for you. Okay, so we're going to go right to our video um, part of this so that you can understand each frame that we have because we have frame and table. We have the Sweet 16 table. We have the little, which is new to our uh um, family group, of machines. Family, yeah, family, yeah. Thank, you, thank you. Family of machines and tables. And then the studio and the gallery. And we just we're just wanting to help you understand how you can make this such a wonderful experience. So we're gonna go right to our video and then we'll come back and go through our PowerPoint to help you understand some more things. Hi, I'm Vicki House from Handy Quilter. And I'm Cheryl Duncan. And we are in the Handy Quilter studio today, ready to show you how to make sure your table, your frame, your quilting machine is in perfect order so that you can have the best experience in quilting. So we're gonna start with our Sweet 16, and the first thing we wanna talk about is the overlay. The overlay is a piece of plastic that sits over top of your table, and the purpose for it is we've got to get all of our stuff out of the and way And we've got here. a lot of things we want to talk about that go up. With the overlay, you want the overlay on when you're using your true stitch because it keeps a smooth surface and it bridges the gap between the table and the machine. It also helps when you're using rulers so that you've got a level spot for your ruler to be. And speaking of rulers, one of the best things that you want to do when you're using rulers is to use the handy grip. So with this ruler here, let's put it right here, you can see there's some little handy grip tapes there. You wanna make sure those are on it so that when you slide your ruler, it slides with the fabric and just doesn't go And like it really does effects. grip it. It really it does grips help it. grip it. Yeah, so you can actually move everything together. Because if I turn that over and try it, it just slides. It so you want the, the ruler and the fabric to grip together. So okay. I could almost guide my quilt with just the yeah, handy right. grip on my fingertips. That's maybe. right. So the next thing is, and, and you talked about the overlay, how important that is. And it makes a nice surface for your table. So it bridges that gap where the machine and the table is not, where the table doesn't cover the machine. So it's nice for that. Now, I can t see that uh, I have a large quilt. And the table is 36 by 32. And so my quilt's gonna hang over. What can you get, sell me? You know what, we have extensions that will go on one or the other side or both sides. They're 18 inches wide and they just hook onto your table and then that extends your table out even further yeah, so that you can big balance your, you can have your quilt on the sides there and not have it hanging over. That's really nice. And then they fold down so that it makes a smaller footprint when you're not using your right. machine. So that's great. Okay, I can see one thing that we have not set up properly here. I, I uh, can see that 
<coughs> your feet aren't necessarily touching the ground. So that tells me that your chair is too tall. It probably but, is. And yet you're, you feel like, uh, do you feel like it's the right height? I the do. table, so you're not having to scrunch yeah, your shoulders I'm not up. Scrunching my shoulders. So you've got a a, a um, right angle, a right angle right here, and that's what you want. But you don't want your shoulders scrunched because that's going to give you stress. Right. In there. So, but you've got that set. So that tells me that your chair is too tall because your feet aren't touching the ground. I could get an apple box. Yes, and I've seen that. Uh, but the table itself is adjustable, and so on the side on the legs of the table you'll just squeeze your little um, tabs and that can help drop this table down so it can go down so let's change and for me this I think is the, is the right height because I'm a little taller than you just a little and so my feet actually touch the ground and so then I can use my foot pedal and Cheryl tells me that she quilts with her left foot I'm right-handed but she uses the left foot pedal, or her left uh, foot, for the foot pedal. I'm a right foot pedal person. I don't think I could get that brain going there with that. But <clears throat> I also take my shoe off, and you said you I do that too. Because I like that feel, that extra yeah. feel. So that's something that you might want to consider using that. Now for me, this is like perfect, perfect height. The chair is right, I've got both feet on the ground, and I'm a, at a right angle. Now, if you is this a uh, good? No, I'd be. But my, your but your feet are on the my ground. My feet are on the ground. So this is the right height of chair for you. Yeah, probably. Then is. we have to lower the table yes. a few inches. Yep. Okay. So really important. Get this set up first before you start quilting, and then you won't have that ache in your in your shoulders, in your hands, and and then we can be a happy quilter. All right. You'll We're be able to quilt longer if it's in the right position. That's true. We will be able to quilt longer. But one of the things that we tell our quilters here is every 20 minutes look up and look 20 feet and blink and exercise your eyes because you can really do damage to your Get eyes if focused. you're not doing that. So, okay. Yeah. Good, good tips. Yep. Well, we are ready to move on to our next frame with Carrie. So, let's go. Okay. We are with Carrie on our HQ Little Foot. And why do we call it the HQ Little Foot, Carrie? Because it's got such a little footprint that you can put it anywhere in your house. That's right, and yet you can quilt any, any size, size quilt, quilt. From a small quilt to a king size quilt. Absolutely. That's right. Yes. So the tools that come with this to make it that way, which make it really nice, are some di different clamps. So we have this one here, this which is- the HQ Super Long clamp. And there are, comes with two of these, and these. The, the nice thing about this, you can use these on your Avante frame, on the studio frame. So if you ever want to just quickly put on a a, a, a quilt mm -hmm. real fast and just do some quilting, you can use these. So they'll fit on all of the poles, and so they're they'll be available on our website to purchase for the studio frame, not for the fusion or the gallery frame but for the studio frame at this time, okay? Great. And then I see some other clamps. You have this, which is your easy grasp, very easy to grasp clamp. Yes, and those will fit on the Avante frame as well, or the studio frame, and so those help tighten down the sides of it. The six of those come with it. And then we have these clamps. Yeah, you can take both in the large and the small. And these are called? These are your hold tight clamps. Okay, and this holds, they'll actually fit on, on, on your, these. yeah, so Just it gives like you that. a little bit more stability there. And this one, I love this because the quilt does not roll up on the pole, so these clamps hold the quilt, so that as you're quilting along here, it holds it. Now, another thing with this, we've got this all clamped on, and you notice I, there's not a lot of tension here. Right. It's kind of like a bed there for the mm -hmm. cat, mm -hmm. heaven forbid, but we don't want that, <laughs> do we? <laughs> and, but what it can do is that it gives you a better stitch if you don't have that, that so fabric tight. tightened like a drum. Yeah. So you can see, you can adjust that just even by turning these gives you a little bit more tension or less tension. And the same with the clamps on the back here. So you can adjust those. All right, so I mean, you can see this that you've spray basted this. 
This one has been spray basted to create that sandwich. Right. The one that we have here that you have done, and you did a great job of do, giving us an example okay. of wh what not to what do, not to do, and that's exactly. really a good thing, yes. is when you do your pins, you want your pins running all in one direction, horizontal, so that when you put these long clamps, clamps on, on, it'll fit on it, and it won't have a pin going yeah, they don't, vertical. They do not fit if they're vertical, but if they're horizontal, they'll just clamp yep. right over so the So a good pins. tip on getting this ready, so, yes. getting your fabric ready, always you want to have excess fabric, backing fabric, and at least six, six inches. inches all the way around, and then on your batting, you know, two to four inches extra as well. Another way to make your quilt sandwich is to actually do a uh, basting stitch whether you do it by hand or by a machine, you can do a basting stitch about every four inches, and then this pulls out. You could use water-soluble thread afterwards if you wash your quilt set right after, and, and that'll go away, Yes, and it's good to go, okay? Mm -hmm. So the next thing we wanna talk about in, in our first one with the Sweet 16, we talked about the correct height for you as you're sitting. You also need to do that while you're standing, too. You don't want anything too short that you're hunching over or too tall that you're having to go back for, mm -hmm. for your eyesight. So for me, this is again too short. I would bring this up taller. And so what we want to do is we want to put our hands on the handlebars and we want to see how much space there is from our arm to the pole here. Yeah, and this is too short. So that's like six to eight inches. Mm -hmm and you should have about three. So mm -hmm. this needs to be raised. To raise this, there's a different way of raising this and they're in your instructions on how to change the, to change the height of this table. But one thing that's really nice with this frame is it's small and you may wanna just put it in a bedroom, a guest bedroom and then move it out when you're using it. You can put casters on this. So you four wheels, cause there's four legs there, put casters on that. And you can move it wherever you want. Yes, that's it moves nice. around so nice. Yes. And you can have, it, it's great to use. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, so I really, I'm excited about this for a lot of quilters that have smaller homes and a smaller budget. This right. is an entry level machine, the Simply 16 and the frame, but you can put an Avante frame on this and or an Avante machine on this and, and you can put the Pro Stitcher yes. on this. So a great thing for you yes. as you're advancing in your quilting. Yep. All right, yes. now let's move on to our next frame and see what else we have to learn today. All right, now we have the studio frame and Marie. All right, goes good together. That's right, that's <laughs> right. So we, we always wanna make sure our frame is set up correctly. Have I said that enough today? I think it makes such a difference in your sewing if everything is right. And it's it, set to your body too because right. this, you know, I've talked about the other two frames were too, sm too sh uh, short for me. This one is actually too tall for me because my, my arm is not at that 90 degree angle. I'm more at a 45. Yeah. <laughs> 45 is all right, but <laughs> no, usually so if you I want, want it to, to be at a 90. So if I so, drop that down. So about there. Or and so three inches from there to to your to, to your my hand. hand. Or you can stand at the side and do a measurement. So this is obviously too tall for you. It is, but I kind of like my frame tall too. I see that's so, okay as well. So you kind of get a feel for it. When I do ruler work, I actually will either sit down because my frame is a little lower, or I will I would prefer a higher frame. Yeah. And we'll talk about how to get that frame a little taller in a few minutes, but. Okay, so just a couple of things about setting up your setting up your frame. So you can see that my leaders, they both kind of waterfall to the center, so in between the poles. That's how you want it to go. And I always keep my little clickers. Ratchets. Ratchets, I knew there was a good name for them. <laughs> Locked down when I'm advancing my fabric or rolling it on so that I know I'm rolling the right way. Absolutely, when you Kay. roll, the ratchets are down. So the ratchets and this, uh, if you are a left-handed person, you may not want your hand wheel 
on the right side and that, that's yeah. just really or if you have a room that is too small and you want to have everything shifted that way yeah you may want to take your hand wheel and put it on the left side of your frame and there's not a problem with that if you do that then your side arms have to you have to figure out change those side arms so so these little ratchets right here instead of putting them on this side you'd put them down on that end. Yeah, you'd actually you'd actually unscrew them and you'd move them over so they're still on the inside. And with that, you'll also do this, the ratchet stop. Okay, this ratchet stop. That's what holds that ratchet in, up when you're not having it engaged. They have to be moved as well. Okay, so if that's the case, you want to move it down there. Then that's a you know you can do that. It's great when you're installing your frame. The other thing is that I did immediately when I got my fusion frame is I put a second hand wheel on the, on the backing bar so that when I advance my fabric, I give it that little extra help with the hand wheel and they wheel, they turn together. Which sometimes when you are advancing your quilt, that gets a little tight and if you just back that off just a little bit. And the same thing then you here. Can, yeah, both of those. So the, the one thing, and I know you've got parts in your hands for this very reason and I've got the tool for you, but sometimes after years of use, there, this pole may slip in the, the ratchet and the gear here. And so you're going to show... And so I happen to have parts. <laughs> I can so even sometimes show you. you may actually Kay. break a part. So this little part is what's inside your pole. And this is what's coming out. So this fits together. And as you tighten it, this sucks in and it makes your pole expand and it tightens this into the pole. So as you tighten this nut onto here, that brings it farther out and that's what kind of locks it on. So you really want to see uh, about a half inch of this screw coming out. So okay. could I borrow a tool? So uh, what you're saying is it isn't there. So it could so, be slipping here. So it's a little loose. Right. Sure. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna we're gonna do that one. Do this one. No, we're not gonna do that one. Here, Marie's not very good at tools. <laughs> You're gonna put it right there, Marie. Okay, there. There we go. <laughs> this is a joke we have. Hold these, please. <laughs> yes. I'd love to. <laughs> okay, and then I'm holding on to the bar, and then I'm just going to tighten. Kay. You want to give it a good snug tight. And it needs to be tight, and you should be tightening it when you set it up. So, and as tight as it will go, but that should be a good half inch. And you'll notice, one of the things you'll notice is the little black cap. If it keeps falling off, you probably don't have a, enough of that bolt tightened down so that there's half an inch poking out. Good. Okay. So All that's, right, that's great. That's my tip for the day, my tool tip. <laughs> wow, that's really good. We're going to record that. Oh, oh wait, we, we did. are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Okay, so the next thing is you have your side clamps. Well, let's stay while we're on this end. Let's look at our, um, again, on this machine, we have put the casters on. And you know, if you have to move that around, that is a great it is. thing They're, to have on. Yeah, it's nice. It does raise your frame, so then you'd have to readjust your frame down so that you have the correct height. Okay, okay. so has, casters are awesome. What else? All right, so why don't we get started here? You've you've actually loaded some fabric, I noticed. And while we're here, though, maybe I'm doing ruler work. Will you put that on for us? Show us how we get that on properly. And I'll hold that machine. Okay. Which is another thing, leveling your <laughs> you machine, know. leveling your so cable. So I'm going to let go of this machine for a minute. Okay. Uh, that's really bad. This makes it so hard, so hard to get a good flow of stitching because it's fighting you. So you always want to level your table. And when you have the casters on it and you move it in a room, sometimes your room may be a little unlevel. So, you know, that's something you have to fight or work with. So it's the same thing. I happen to know this tool 
right here will work on the bottom of there and you can adjust just a little bit using on each this leg. that part right there right this part right here <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna hook it on and you can adjust the legs from there but you can use your machine to tell you if your table is level so you can set it at this end and see if it goes that way. You this can set it in the middle, right? But we're doing this to show you how bad it can be. This Kay. is not good quilting so if you So use, use your machine to know if it's leveled for you. Okay, so let's put on a ruler, ruler base. base. All right. So I I happen to usually put my arms in here I saw that. to wrestle I'm my just machine. Let go of it. Okay, because I don't want it going backward on me. So. First of all, I just kind of set this on those tabs, so I know I'm right there. Then I drop the left side and lock it in, and then flex the right side and put it on. Easy, easy. And you can quilt with your ruler base on, even if you're not using rulers. You don't have to take it on and off all the time. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't interfere with your frame, so you're fine with Do it. Do you quilt with yours on? You know, I use rulers so much that I Pretty much every quilt have it on all yeah. the time. And see, I use rulers a lot, but I take it off after I'm finished with a ruler because yeah. I like that free. The reason I do is because I like to put my hand and give if I need any pliable fabric, you know, to kind of press the fabric and take maybe yeah. fullness out. So you know, it's and you can still push on the other side of your ruler and get that same of okay. your ruler base. Get that same so kind of effect. one of the issues that that our quilters have is that when they have not uh, provided enough backing fabric for according to what their top, top fabric is and so their top fabric is really close to the edge and I want to do ruler work and I get up here close over here and I'm get the closer I get and I have my my clamp on here yeah. and it bumps and then it jogs me and that's just so frustrating because I do not like to rip out. Right, so we have a trick for that. I do. We have a tip or a trick here. So this is just twill tape, and you can take a piece of that and pin it onto your backing. So you can see that. And then you can put your clamp and just attach it to that. And you can make this as twill and tape this, as long as you want. You can, and Cheryl is clever in this, and she actually sewed just a little ledge on there, a little over, it's kind Maybe of folded over, which then your clamp hooks onto. And then you can tighten this as tight as you want. Very, 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 very. <laughs> Take the tension out of that. Okay, <laughs> let's do that again so you can really get a good visual of that. Okay. We see this happen a lot. So you tight. can really oh. pull it until your fabric is distorted. But it's not distorted and here or here, but it's here. And when you release that after you've quilted here, then you still get that pucker. So you want to be real careful that you just stabilize your back. Even with your clamps, you can do the same thing. You just want to stabilize it. So just enough. You don't want to pull that really tight. Okay? And the same thing with your poles when you put your fabric on. Watch the tension on your quilt. It does not have to be really tight. In fact, you can tighten it so tight that you bend your poles. So you want to be careful. Okay. So let's go to poles. All right. If your side arms are placed on incorrectly at too high, then you're going to have too much space here. So I'm going to move the machine down, and so our cameraman can come and show that you can put your finger, just barely put your fingernails there, or your tip of your finger there, and that's perfect right there. But if you have an inch or more, it's causing your fabric to be too high, and then the fabric is bouncing as the machine is stitching, and that doesn't make for a good stitch, and it's really hard oh, to see, it's very too. very frustrating. So you yeah. always want to make sure that you have that fingertip there, and then, if it isn't, then you need to adjust your both side arms yeah, so right, that you get right that. Right here, how high this is. The other thing is, is that if it's too low, it's obviously gonna rub yeah. on the pole, and it does have these pins, the little button p buttons there to attach the poles and that would cause some problems too. Yeah, sometimes if they're rolled down to the bottom, those little pins, then they catch as you come past there. So it's so always good to have those turned yeah, up anyway. Have it turned out. Okay, yeah. now another complaint or issue that, qu that, that quilters have is getting the batting between here. See this is really out of balance, you know? 
it's like, whoa, it's going to go the other direction. Uh, but we need so to. Just move it down there and we'll put this on. Uh, what I want to, what we want to show is something that I do, and I think you do the I same do the thing, same. is rather than try to get this between here, then what uh, what we do is, do you want to? Okay, so one thing you can do is loosen your ratchet, and then that relaxes your fabric a little bit. So and I'm actually going to release the clamps right now because. There we go. Sure. Uh, do you want to release that clamp? I'd love to. Okay. Okay, so you can release that, but I'll tell you something that I found that works so <laughs> slick. I, will you release that clamp up there, that ratchet? Okay. I am going to bring this forward as about this close, okay? Okay. And go ahead and tighten that. Now, what I do, and I know Marie does this too, is we pop this end out and we let it rest over there. And we can, you know, release that a little bit so that this is so easy just to go under here with our wayward machine that doesn't want to stay in its place. And, and I'd help you, but I want them to see that you can just do this by yourself so oh, easily. Oh, please don't help me. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to help. So, <laughs> so But see it how makes easy such a difference is. to lift the pole and just have pull it close it. to you. Yeah. Close. Especially when you have the bigger machines like the mm -hmm. Infinity and the Infusion. Yeah, you don't you know. want to have to reach so far. So I bring it really close. And let's pull out this while we have it. <laughs> That's the other saver. That's super leader. Yeah. Now the the Infinity machine with the gallery frame comes with the super leader and then two smaller frames. Okay? Or two smaller leaders. The other frames do not come with this super leader. I would say this is the first thing you buy after you buy your machine is Those to buy, buy this super, super leader. leader. Yeah. This is a 28 inch leader. And we'll just go ahead and take it out of the plastic so you can see how much bigger. Oh, so. Oh, yeah, see? It's wonderful. Even yeah. on the yeah. Avante with a smaller is. frame, it is the best thing so that you have plenty of leader. And it's 12 feet, and if you have your setup at a 10 or an 8 foot, you can cut that off and serge it or, you know, yeah, stitch yeah. that edge. Okay, so now I've got that ready, and I can go ahead. Okay, we'll put that back in. And then I would stitch my basting stitch across here. Using your channel lock so you get a straight mm -hmm. line and you start your quilt straight. And then square that up, stitch it, and now they're all attached. Everything's attached, the three. Then I can advance so it forward one, a little one thing. bit. Do you put your clamps on before you do that? So you have your back stretched? You could. It's, I, yes. Yes. Because <laughs> we, we don't want any surprises on the back of your quilt. So just one attach time. the clamp to the back. And you only need your clamps where you're stitching, right? Yes. So this is. Yes. And when you say that, I'll, I'm going to pull this out. And if we were, do you want to release that ratchet, please, the top one? I'm going to pull this out. So this is just some blocks here. That's a 12 inch block probably. And that's where I'm going to be quilting is right in here. Maybe I'm only going to be quilting that top part. That's where I would have my clamps. I wouldn't put my clamps. I mean, yeah, you want to stabilize everything, but I see some quilters, they'll put a clamp here and they'll put a clamp up here. And all of this space right here is left not yeah. working. And yet that's where she's working. No, yeah. So that's where I put my tension is where I'm quilting across. Okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So we've stitched it down. We've done all this work close to us. So it's exactly close to us because because uh, we have better control. You better control and eyesight in that first 12 inches. Even though we have a larger frame, yeah. I still like to work within right. that, especially when I'm doing ruler work and micro quilting yeah. is really close. Yeah. So, do you use, do you ever sit down? Well, <laughs> wait. <laughs> sit down to quilt? To quilt. I do love to sit down to quilt. And when you're doing rulers or you're doing micro quilting, you know, you're in the same spot a long time. So, you know, you can just use that and. This is, is this a little tall? It is a little tall, but I can see really well. You know? Yeah. And yeah. that's really important so, to but be it, able It's to probably see. a little tall. Yeah, this seems like, because yeah. you're, you're going to have some shoulder strain with that. Yeah. 
And so you either need a taller stool or your frame needs or to go frame down. lower. Okay. Yeah. All right. We want to now bring in another frame and talk about some more things. So hold on. We've moved in our fusion frame. Now the fusion frame is a frame that goes with the fusion and that's what we used to call it. But now we have a frame called the gallery frame which comes with the fusion or the infinity. And the difference between those frames is that you can extend yeah, right these poles two inches out to accommodate the extra throat space the, that the infinity has, which is great. Same frame, but just make it a little longer. And then you'll have that logo on here. That That's right. And power. the other thing that the infinity frame does not have right now is it does not have these bungee clips. So it ha comes so that you have to use Velcro with with your clamps, okay? Um, if those people that are using this frame that have the bungee clips would like to use the Velcro clamps, same clamp, but just with Velcro on it, you can purchase that, uh, the Velcro, a set of Velcro clamps with a Velcro that goes across the plate right there and add that on, and I actually like Velcro. I like the Velcro too. You know, but that's a preference, so it's your choice. You get to do what you want with that. <laughs> and the other thing that I did, like I said, first thing is I added the hand wheel on this bar right here, on the backing bar, because then I can advance those back yep. and forth and roll them, and that's a really nice addition to add. Uh, with my Fusion, it did not come with the Super Leader. So I added a super leader. So second thing you added, yes. <laughs> second thing to do. <laughs> but, but those things make it easier as you're quilting and that's really what we want is anything that makes it easier for us to quilt. Makes and it just, better. Yep. And you know, you're going to love it. You know, when things are hard, it's hard. So to talk about this, we want to set up our frame so that it's level because that is really a hard thing to do you know, a hard thing to, to quilt. To chase your machine around. So That's how about right. the height of this one? What do you think? All right. Uh, All right. This looks like a good fit. How does it, it feel? Does it? Uh, it feels great. You kind of get a feel for what feels right. Yeah, it feels really so. nice. And I have the Pro Stitcher, so that's right at my eye level. Yeah. I'm not having to look down. I'm not having to look up. Looking up is really bad, so you definitely yeah, you don't want it, it too hard. tall. So I've got this, I've raised this to the height that I like. This, is this your, is this a little bit too tall for you? It's just, oh, I, yeah, I just want it down just a little bit. Could you take care of that for me? Well. <laughs> just make it go down. I think we could do that. <laughs> this frame actually has a uh, high rise Which unit is, on it. Yeah, you can see down here. And so that allows the customer, if you have purchased this with a friend and the friend is really short or really tall and you one of you you know you're struggling you can yep. add that high rise unit to it and I actually have a little fob here that I can change that to go higher ooh, ooh. or I can go way down with it. <laughs> you can also have presets on there so you know this person likes it this height you can set it at that height the other person so you just press a button and so you have like A, B, and C here, so you can decide which one is which height. If you have that preset, you just push it and get adjusted yeah. to that height. Or if you're a ruler so. girl and you want it tall and stand for yeah. rulers, then yeah. move it up. If you want to do micro quilting, you're going to sit on a stool, then you move it down. Yeah. So it's yeah. a great option and addition to your quilting frame. All right. What? Well, so I just want to talk a little bit about cleaning your frame, keeping your frame clean and your wheels. And you really want to quilt clean. You don't want to get any thread in your wheels. You want to make sure you keep your threads trimmed. And a good way to trim or to clean your wheels and also clean your track is just a piece of batting. And you can just rub it along there and that keeps that off of there. But you also need to clean inside your wheels here as well. And and I noticed right now there is a piece of thread on this wheel, which would definitely, as a, if I were doing free motion quilting, I would feel that. You would feel just that thread. I would totally thread. feel that. Yeah, so, so just a little bit of thread. Clean tracks here. Yep, see here's a, who used this machine? Set that up perfect for us. That's <laughs> right. And you know, fabric has lint. 
yeah. Fred Haslam, your room, the air. And so it accumulates and you think, oh my goodness, well, how did I do that? I thought I was a cleaner person than that. I may, I use um, pounce pad, the pounce chalk. Yeah. And there was one day that I was quilting and I was not getting my encoder to, to uh, make contact. It was just doing nothing. And I checked it and I had so much chalk on that that it was not doing anything. It wasn't uh, even turning for me. Uh, so I lost that. So I thought, oh, I definitely want to check that. Clean everything out every once in a while. Always after every time you change your bobbin, check your lint in your bobbin hook area. Change that oil after every bobbin. But um, one of the things that I have found that I didn't think mattered are those silver wheels that are down underneath here, that the wheels that uh, run across the track of the machine. And I found out that they get black and they make a little boop boop. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so I will take either quilt batting or even my finger and I will just run that as I move the machine along. And right there, oh. I have some yeah. that could make a problem eventually yeah. as it yeah. builds up. All right, so that, that's a huge thing. The other thing that you need to be aware of, there are eight wheels on the front and there are eight wheels on the back that oh. run on that track. Not every wheel has to run on that track. Yeah. There may be one that doesn't make contact with the track and it's okay, yeah. it's okay. But as long as the majority of those wheels are making contact with the track, you've got smooth sailing. So one thing too is right here you can see these leaders, probably a little better than you can see with the quilt, but you can see how that water falls down in. So you can see those leaders. So water falls down to the center. Each yep. one of them turn yep. that way. Turn into the That's center. That's the way they have to turn so that you get the, the tension and the ratchet so grips it. Load your quilt right. So Marie, I got blood on my leader. I soiled it. I'm gonna wash it. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why should I not wash my leaders? Don't wash your leaders because it distorts them and you will not get them back flat and straight the way they are. So the Velcro, so because that Velcro does not shrink or shift, but the fabric is cotton and it will shrink, won't it? And so then you'll have puckering and they're really ugly. Yeah, so just spot clean. Spot clean or else replace your leaders and buy uh, purchase new, new leaders so that you have clean leaders. Yeah. And you, if you've cut your leaders off because you've set your frame up to an eight foot frame and you want to now go to a 12 foot frame, you can always purchase new leaders and you can also cut your leaders uh, shorter. That's what I was just gonna say, cut your leaders in half. Okay, let's talk about these little lines and how important they are. I move this machine out of the way. Or here. not, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these lines. So, they're, they're just kind of a decoration. They're <laughs> by the time these go through the printing process and the stitching process, you can't depend on, on everything being exactly straight. Yep. Yeah, but they are, you know, the leader just works to hold your fabric. That's right. So when you put your leader on the first time, mark your pole, find the halfway point in your pole, mark it with a, a Sharpie marker on all three poles, Mark your leader, find the halfway, fold it in half. And if one leader, look at this, if one leader is shorter a little bit, but then the other leader, it's okay. They go to the next uh, measurement on as they cut them. So it doesn't matter that they may be a little different in, in their length, but you'll have marks on your leaders and that's your center point. So you'll always center your quilt up from the center and we have videos on that on your uh, getting started DVDs on how to actually load a frame you know your quilt on the frame and to have this the most success so I hope that these tips today have helped you to make sure that everything is in working order so that you have the best experience in your quilting All right, we are, and thanks for enjoying, hopefully enjoying our video today. <laughs> we had a fun time doing that. 
Uh, on our PowerPoint today, we're just what what we have included in this is there are a lot of um, links to the things that we talked about today, and we don't want you to feel that this is an infomercial that we're just selling because there were lots of it. There's lots of information that we gave here today on tips on things because if you, because of owning our frames and our machines, things that can help you have a better experience. Yeah. And so uh, we're just kind of really quickly go through the PowerPoint, which is basically going through the video just a little bit but faster, just so that you know what's available for you. The overlay for the Sweet 16, and you can have that on the regular uh, Sweet 16 table and also on the hideaway table, which we didn't show in this uh, segment. The handy grips, and you can find those on our website. And I forgot to put a link for those handy grips oh. on our website. So you can go to our website. Those are great for the rulers. For, the for rulers. any, whether you're on a stand up or the sit down, right. great for the rulers. So the best experience that you're going to get on the Sweet 16, set your table height. That really makes a difference. And your chair. And your chair. Yep. So you're working Work with together. your feet flat on. Uh, flat on the ground, and I think that your posture, you know, makes such a difference to get a good stitch. So here. yeah, yeah. So you want your arms to be at that 90 degree angle. That's good. <laughs> sure right. working. That was good. I got my angles down. I had a hard time yes. with that. Yes. Yes. Uh, and go ahead. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's gone. So oh, it's gone. Oh, it's that age. <laughs> the other thing is that we ne we didn't show in the video that I think. To me, is crucial when I'm doing sit down quilting with the suite is to I have some type of the machingers or something to grip that quilt as I'm moving it, so that because that creates I know I think it would create carpal tunnel on my on my hands, but but something that will grip and those machingers are great to yeah, use and they're not great tool. The thing that I was concerned about the machingers is that it would make me hot. As I'm, you know, with those yeah, gloves yeah. on, and that they they yeah. don't. Yeah, those they're are really good. Yeah. So okay. Great tools. The handy grip and the machingers on that sit down. And then the extension. We talked about that. <laughs> We've included a link on that on how to install it, and also how to where you can find that to purchase. Never, never, never let your quilt hang off the the table because it's just hard to move that quilt yeah. around. And you can put. Have one, or you can have two on your table, mm -hmm. so. and you can have it on either side. So yeah. just a matter of what you, which side you want it on. And then we talked about making sure that you can adjust, you know, you adjust your table to the right height. And we have a link for a video on how to do that. And the little foot, it's been taken by a storm. Everybody's so excited about oh. that small footprint, which means. How much space it's going to take in your home? Yeah. So how, yes. much, how big it's going to be? So which, can, this is just a small, you know, about big enough to do your quilt. And I'm like, I'll, whatever it takes to get me quilting. That's you know? right. So oh, there oh. is a video on setting up the frame, and we have, you know, on on adjusting the fabric for that. You know, advancing your fabric. So there's information for you. And you can add casters to that little yeah. frame, so it can be moved around. Right, way. and especially this one, I think you would want casters on because you probably will just want to, you know, kind of move it to the side and yeah. do something else. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so these are clamps, and these are uh, side clamps that are available as well with a five-foot-long Velcro cord. And they don't. No, they don't come with the little foot frame. These are something that you can add on. Some people don't feel like they need those side clamps. Some people do. So it's available for you. You put the loop and tape on this, or uh, Velcro. the Velcro <laughs> loop tape on the side of your frame, and then you can use these clamps as yep. well. Which, if I'm doing a small quilt, I definitely would want. Those. Oh yeah, you would. Okay, link for that. So these are the easy grasp clamps that Carrie showed. So there's six included with the little foot, and they can also be purchased for the studio frame. And there's the link to find those. And this one is the big long super quilt clamp, and this one comes with the little foot frame. Also can be available for the studio frame, and there's the link for that. And it's really awesome because <laughs> there's been times that I think I just want to put on 
just a little piece of fabric, like even for testing tension. And I just have those clamps, clamp it on, clamp it onto the to the idler pole, and you've got that extra fabric there. Or I just want to do just a little quilt and just clamp them on. Or you have that part, you took the whole quilt off and you got one spot you got to go back in. That's and true. So you can just use that to put it on. Yeah, nice Keep addition for our studio frame. Yeah. So these are accessories. These are the hold tight clamps. They're three small and three large. And they kind of look like our channels, but they have the boot on them. They're just a nice way to manage your quilt. They they are used on the little foot to as you advance the quilt to that's how you manage it. Rather than rolling it on the poles, you actually just clamp these on and it holds that tight, you know, it holds it that excess that you've uh -huh. already quilted or whatever. So they're nice yeah. for that, but they can be used on a studio frame and the larger ones will actually fit on the fusion on the gallery frame. So would they fit the pole right? The exact size or they're a little bigger? You know, um, we'll have to check that because I haven't, I just know that you can use that to add a little tension there. So, yeah, we'll check it. Good question. Good question. Oh, I get a point. <laughs> Maybe Sarah from our uh, product development would know that and she could let us know. And then we go to our studio frame that can be set up at an 8 foot, 10 foot, and 12 foot. So, it actually could be set up at a four foot, at a six foot, if you buy the ten foot configuration. So right. you've got a lot of options there. If I was had the room for a twelve foot, I would always set it up at the yeah. twelve foot, and that would be the way it was. But if you don't have that, we have options for you. And machines that can go on the studio frame are the Simply 16, which is our newest machine, which goes on the little foot, and so it can go on our studio frame. And the HQ16, the Sweet 16, if it was with the upgrade to that, and the Avante machine, of course. But this is the high-rise lift system. And we showed that so in the video. How, yep, that's what it looks like. And casters can be added as well to the studio frame. So with the little foot, you need four casters with the uh, four casters. That was a joke, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, with the little foot you need four casters, and with the studio and the gallery frame you will need eight. This is the hand wheel that you can add to the frame so that you'll have one at the front, one at the back. So this is the And this is loaded one. on the backing pole, which is the closest to your belly. And to me, that was my first addition to my, I want that because I like to be able to turn both of those and that backing fabric a little bit of a help. So that was a, a no-brainer for me to add, <laughs> add to it. This is the super leader. And that was the second thing I added. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the studio, I have the Avante, and so I held off on this. I was like, no, I don't need that. That's for the bigger machine. Oh, so I should have saved myself a lot of time or a lot of eight, whatever, because yeah. it's so convenient. It makes it so much better. No so. bending at all. It brings bring it right up to you. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a great really addition. Nice. So the HQ Studio frame. You want to set it at the right height. You want to make sure it's level. Um, you want to relax your shoulders. Same thing, kind of. You know, that good posture makes a big difference when you're quilting. Saves your saves your back. Do you know something that, that's not in here, but I have seen when we have our retreaters come, is what they will be quilting, and they will quilt, 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 and they never move their body. So their arms are moving the machine, and so pretty soon they are not standing in front of the machine, and you don't feel this as well. And so it's kind of like, move your body with the machine, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's a great tip. Okay, so then we talked about keeping it clean. Always use a ruler base. Yes, keep those tracks clean. We're going to show you a little <coughs> bit of more more tips here that you go through at your leisure. And so thread can be the worst culprit for that bump in the track to not get a perfect stitch. You're going along and you're going, why is it just oh. jerking it? 
one piece of thread. And, and why tidy. right here am I having such a hard time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So keep those tracks clean. Clean them off with just quilt batting is the best way to clean them. Just rub them down with quilt batting. Keep the threads out from the wheels. Look at the wheel. I'm going to move my little pencil up here. Look at the thread around that. That is a big issue waiting to happen. Right. And you need to get right down in there and look and see if there's... After the every retreat we have here, because we have 24 machines in our studio, Cheryl goes through every wheel. Count that up eight times. <laughs> she goes through every wheel and makes sure that all the thread is, is yeah, gone. Yeah, and she'll book. find it. Yeah, she will, yeah. with her little pin like she shows there. So make sure that's clean. And then, this is just on one of our machines in the studio on our Infinity, and that's how much we use this, but you can see in the red circle all the, the buildup of lint that becomes a big issue that causes that yeah. to create. Yeah. So you can see the silver wheel, that's a clean one. I didn't clean that. That was clean. The other one is the one that was picking up. There. Picking up, yeah. So keep those clean. Just with batting, it makes such a difference. Okay, here's gallery frame, also 12 foot. Uh, it's for the Fusion and the ND, and it can only be set up at 12 foot. That's right. Yep. And it can have the casters on it, and uh, eight casters. And it, the casters have a locking system, so you, once you get it set in position, then you can lock it. And then, once it's set in the position you need, maybe your machine is rolling, and you saw that happen to us on the Avante, it was really, the floor was really not level like it should have been. And from that, that point, once you get it set, take that tool and you can adjust that so then it's level again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's worth the quilting. It's worth every minute to level that frame. And again, you can add the hand wheel to the gallery frame. And you can add the, uh, the high, high rise. rise. And that shows you that tool and adjusting, and you, you'll, like I say, you can adjust it whether your casters are on or just with the feet on it. Make sure that it's a level. The one thing, too, I want to bring out a tip is when I set mine up, I set it up in uh, a bedroom after my daughters moved out. Then they could never move back, right? Right, right. <laughs> but I set it up in a bedroom with carpet, and it set up, and we leveled it. Well, then in a few days, that weight of the machine yeah. created a difference. And so then we had to re-level it. So make sure you check that. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It just the, the pressure on your carpet and that, you just need to re-level it. And check every once in a while. You yeah, know? yeah. Okay, so never wash your leaders. We talked about that. If you need to be clean, spot clean. And those are the different sizes. Yes, you can buy the super leader. You can buy a leader sets a nine and a half feet by the three leader set with eleven feet, which fits your twelve foot frame. Your super leader and then your gallery leaders comes with a super leader and two uh, of the eleven inch. And the question about that, people are saying, "Oh, that's not wide enough. I need a wider one." You really don't need a wider. So you've got your length that's your 12 or your 11 feet, but then you've got width that's 11 feet. And they don't need to be any wider on your no. two to the no. front. They do not. You're never going to have to advance that so far that you need it wider. Yeah, it's right there where you need it. Yes. Other products that you can buy, the, you can add extra things, more bungee cords. If any, you know, if you have a problem, if one breaks, let us know. We'll take care of you with that. The, the leaders. Also, sometimes when you're moving, if you take it for service or something, or something happens, that black plastic that runs along where your wheels run along gets scratched or an issue, you can replace that so that you always have that smooth flow. That's going to make the biggest difference is that track. You want that smooth. Yes. Yeah. All, and it doesn't matter. It, all eight wheels do not have to be touching the black. As long as the majority of them are, you're fine. Yeah, so don't worry about that. And thank you for joining us today. And we uh, hopefully this will be helpful for you. These are things that we see all the time, we answer questions for. So we're glad that you could join us today. 
Our next webinar will be January 14th with a new topic. Excited. 2015. Oh, I forgot to change it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Good so, catch. Well, now I should have come. January 14th, 2016. It is a new year. Oh. So have a good holiday and we will see you in January.